good morning students so we can continue our physics class we are discussing the second chapter units and measurement today we can go through a new concept in this chapter that is order of magnitude order of magnitude this idea order of magnitude usually used to compare measured values of physical quantities to compare the magnitude of physical quantities we use the concept order of magnitude so this concept of order of magnitude is used to compare the physical quantities with either large magnitude or least magnitude that is valiya magnitude huge value magnitude aitulla physical quantities in tamil compare cheyan adu pole valare minute aitulla physical quantities in compare cheyan vendittana order of magnitude use cheyanadu for example uh, if you want to uh, compare the mass of earth which is a very huge number with mass of moon which is also a huge number so in order to compare these two uh, very high physical quantities we use the concept of order of magnitude similar way if you want to compare the radius of an atom which is a very minute uh, physical quantity with the radius of a proton which is also a very minute physical quantities in that situation also we use the same concept order of magnitude so this is the use of uh, order of magnitude now we can define what is order of magnitude if we express the magnitude of the physical quantity in terms of nearest power of 10 if we express the magnitude of physical quantity in nearest in terms of nearest power of 10 then power of 10 is called order of magnitude if we express the magnitude of the physical quantity in terms of the nearest power of 10 then the power of 10 is called order of magnitude we can do some examples so we'll, you will get it more clear about the concept to find out the magnet uh, order of magnitude there is a condition that is the magnitude of the physical quantity a the physical quantity is any ano a physical quantity is in the uh, order of magnitude ano nammal kandupidikkende adinte magnitude should be lies between 0.5 and 5 that is if n is the number uh, this is the magnitude and we have to find out the order of magnitude of this number n then this magnitude should be lies between 0.5 and sorry 0.5 and 5 the magnitude should be greater than 0.5 and it should be less than 5 the magnitude should be greater than 0.5 and the magnitude of the physical quantities should be less than 5 that is 0.5 in the 5 in the middle illa aidikanam a physical quantity in magnitude now we can do some example let us consider the first number 8 the number is 8 we have to find out the order of magnitude of the number 8 listen the magnitude is 8 which is greater than 5 but to in order to find out the order of magnitude the magnitude should be in between 5 and 0.5 but the magnitude of 8 is greater than 5 so we have to take we can rewrite the number 8 as 0.8 0.8 0.8 means the magnitude is in between 0.5 and 5 0.8 is greater than 0.5 and less than 5 so the number 8 can be rewritten as 0.8 into some power of 10 8 into 0.8 into 10 raised to 1. 10 raised to 1 means 10. So 0.8 into 10, we get 8. So the number 8 can be rewritten as 0.8 into 10 raised to 1. So here the power of 10 is 
we already defined what is order of magnitude. If we express the magnitude of a physical quantity in terms of nearest power of 10, then power of 10 is called order of magnitude. So, here the power of 10 is 1. So, order of magnitude is 1. Here, order of magnitude is 1. So, for the number 8, the order of magnitude is 1. Now, we can do another example. Let us consider number 36. Consider the number 36. Whose magnitude is greater than 5. The magnitude 36 is greater than 5. So we have to convert the number 36 into 3.6. We have to put a decimal mark here. That is 3.6. Now, the magnitude 3.6 is less than 5 and greater than 0.5. So, here we are putting one decimal point. So, we can write 3.6 into 10 raised to 1. Then, 3.6 into 10 raised to 1 means 10. 3.6 into 10 gives 36. So, here again, the power of 10 is 1. So, order of magnitude is 1. Order of magnitude is 1. Consider another example. That is the number 5, 4, 1. 5, 41. Here, the magnitude 5, 41 is greater than 5. So, we have to reduce the magnitude. If we put 54.1, that is we are putting a decimal mark after one digit. So, 54.1. Again, the magnitude is greater than 5. So, we have to further reduce the magnitude. This equals 5.41. 5.41. Here, we are putting decimal point after two digits, that is 4 and 1. Here again, the magnitude is 5.41, which is greater than 5. So, again, this is not correct. And we have to put 0 0.541. 0 0.541. The magnitude is further decreased. 0 0.541 means the magnitude is greater than 0 0.5. 0 0.541 is greater than 0.5 and it is obviously less than 5. It is less than 5. So, this magnitude is in between our condition. But the condition in between and in magnitude level. So, we have to express in terms of power of 10. So, 0.541. So, we are here making 3 decimal points. 1, 2, 3. So, the power of 10 is 10 raised to 3. 3 by 10 by 10, we are putting decimal point after 3 digits. So, 0 0.541 into 10 raised to 3. So, the order of magnitude of the number 541 is 3. The order of magnitude is 540, uh, number 541 is 3. Okay. So, number 3 point is, I will tell you, 3 decimal points are not 3 by 10 into power. And the magnitude should of the number should be lies between 0.5 and 5. So, this is the condition to find out order of magnitude. Now, we can discuss another example. That is, the number is 0 0.04. 0 0.04. The magnitude of our physical quantity is 0 0.04. Now, we have to find out the order of magnitude of this number. The magnitude, the magnitude of this number, that is 0 0.04, 0 0.04 is less than 0.5. This number is less than 0.5. So, we have to increase the magnitude here. We have to increase the magnitude. That is, in the first, first step, we can consider 0 0.4. 0 0.4 into 10 raised to 
minus 1. Zero point four into 10 raised to minus 1. Here minus 1 means here we are increasing the magnitude. We are increasing the magnitude of the number. So the uh, power of 10 gets decreased. So we have, can write a 0 0.4 into 10 raised to minus 1. But while consider this 0.4 is again less than 0 0.5. 0 0.4 is less than 0 0.5. So we have to increase the magnitude again. So we can write 4 into 10 raised to minus 2. We are increasing the magnitude of the number from 0 0.4 to 4. So again uh, the power becomes 10 raised to minus 2. So in this case the order of magnitude is minus 2. The order of magnitude is minus 2. Okay. So uh, in the earlier case the ma magnitude of the numbers kept decreasing. That is while finding the magnitude of the number 8, 8 we can convert 8 into 0.8 into 10 raised to 1. Here the magnitude of the number is decreasing. 8 is decreased to 0.8. So the power of 10 is increasing. That is 10 raised to 1. Here the magnitude of the number is 0 0.04. It is increased to 4. So magnitude increasing for 10 into power decreasing. So uh, this is the uh, conditions to find out order of magnitude. Now consider another example. We have to find out the order of magnitude of the number 1. Order of magnitude of number 1 is apply this condition. That is 1 is in between 0 0.5 and 5. It is greater than 0 0.5 and it is less than 5. So we can write we cannot change this number with any decimal points. So 1 into 10 raised to 0. That is, if 1 is magnitude, we have condition of obey chain. That is, 0 0.5 in a card greater than 5 in a card is equal to 1. That is, we have 1 in a number, we have to decimal points in a matter of where the dice is. So 1 in a golden error into 10 raised to 0. So here power of 10, uh, 10 raised to 0. 10 raised to 0 means 1. So uh, power of 10 is 0. So order of magnitude is 0. Similarly, the order of magnitude of 2 will be 2 is also obeying the condition. That is, it is greater than 0 0.5 and less than 5. Again, 2 into 10 raised to 0. In this case also, the order of magnitude is power of 10, that is 0. So, this is the concept order of magnitude. Using this concept, we can express the radius of proton. The radius of proton is 10 raised to minus 15. 10 raised to minus 15 and size of a nucleus. Size of a nucleus is of the order of 10 raised to minus 14. We are expressing this number using the concept order of magnitude. So, size uh, radius of a proton is 10 raised to minus 15 of the order of 10 raised to minus 15 meter and the uh, size of a nucleus is of the order of 10 raised to minus 14 meter. So we can easily compare, compare these two physical quantities. Which one is greater? 10 raised to minus 15 or 10 raised to minus 14? Of course, 10 raised to minus 14 is the greater value comparing these two values. So this is these two are very minute quantities. So but using this concept of order of magnitude, we can easily compare which one is greater. 10 raised to minus 14 is greater than 10 raised to minus 15. So, radius of a nucleus is greater than the radius of a proton. Similar way, we can also compare with highest values also. Similar way, we can compare the radius of moon. The radius of moon is 10 raised to 6 meter and the radius of earth. Radius of earth is 10 raised to 7 meter. 
the radius of moon is of the order of 10 raised to 6 meter and radius of earth is of the order of 10 raised to 7 meter. We can also compare this, this to very huge physical quantities using the com uh, concept of order of magnitude. The radius of earth is greater than radius of moon. That is 10 raised to 7 is greater than 10 raised to 6. So this is the use or application of order of magnitude. Move on to the next concept that is dimension and dimensional analysis. We already learned that all physical quantities can be expressed in terms of fundamental quantities. That is each physical quantity sorry each derived quantities can be expressed in terms of fundamental quantities here we are using only three fundamental quantities from which derived quantities are expressed that is length mass and time the derived quantities are ex expressed only in the in terms of these three fundamental quantities that is length, mass and time. Instead of using this names, only the symbols are used in dimensional analysis. That is the letter L for length, capital letter M for mass and capital T for time L M T. Only those three fundamental qualities are required to express all uh, derived qualities. While expressing the derived quantities in terms of those fundamental quantities, there will be some power for the fundamental quantities. And this power of fundamental quantities is called dimension. Now we can do an example that is we have to find out the dimension of area. The dimension of area. We, we know the equation to find out area is length into breadth. Area is equal to length into breadth. So while writing Dimensional formula, the symbol for area is A and it is written inside a square bracket. This is a symbol for dimension of area. This square bracket implies dimension of area. Dimension of area is equal to dimension of length. You already uh, noticed that the dimension of length is L. So, L into dimension of breadth. Breadth is also some length. So, dimension of breadth is also length. So, dimension of area is equal to length into length. That is length square. Here, the area is expressed in terms of the fundamental quantity length L. So, here the fundamental quantity length has some power that is 2. So, the dimension of area is 2 in length. The dimension of area is 2 in length. And it is independent of other two fundamental quantities that is mass and time. Okay. So, the dimension of area is 2 in length and 0 in mass, 0 in time. So, that is the dimension of area. So, area is a derived quantity and this derived quantity is expressed in terms of the fundamental quantity's length. While expressing in such a way that the fundamental Quantity has a power and this power of fundamental quantity is called dimension. So, dimension of area is 2 in length. 
since it is independent of the other two fundamental qualities that is mass and time the uh, area the dimension of area is written as dimension is 2 in length 0 in mass and 0 in time so this is the dimension now we write the dimension of area that is dimension of area equal to l square so it is 2 in length and it is independent of mass and time now we can express this dimension of area in this manner that is its power the it is independent of mass so m raised to 0 l square and t raised to 0 so dimension of area equal to m raised to 0 l square t raised to 0 since m raised to 0 means the area is independent of mass t raised to 0 means the area is independent of time and l square means it depends uh, uh, length the fundamental quality length so if you write at this expression that is m raised to 0 l square t raised to 0 is called dimensional formula of area dimensional formula of area because this expression is show it is a compound expression which shows the dependence of the area the physical quantity area with the, the three fundamental quantities this is a compound expression showing the dependence of the derived quantity area with the three fundamental quantities and this compound expression is called dimensional formula of area now Consider this total expression that is area, the dimension of area equal to m raised to 0, l square, and t raised to 0. And this total expression is called a dimensional equation. That is, we are equating a physical quantity with its dimensional formula. That is called a dimensional equation. So, first we learn that is, uh, first one we have learned is that what is dimension. That is, the power of fundamental quantities is called a dimension. That is, here dimension of area is 2 in length, 0 in mass and 0 in time. That is the dimension of area. Next one, dimensional formula. This compound expression containing the dependence of the derived quantities with fundamental quantities mass length and time is called a dimensional formula now the equation which is equating the physical quantity with its dimensional formula is called a dimensional equation so we have to familiar with these three terms what is dimension what is dimensional formula and what is dimensional equation now we can consider another derived quantity velocity we have to find out the dimension dimensional formula and dimensional equation of the derived quantity velocity we know that velocity is equal to displacement by time displacement divided by Time. So velocity, the dimension of velocity v is equal to dimension of velocity v is equal to displacement. Displacement means length. So dimension of length is L divided by time. Dimension of time is T. So L by T. This can also be written as L 
t raised to minus 1. That is t in the denominator is taken in the numerator. So that the power becomes minus 1. The 1 by t is equal to t raised to minus 1. So the dimension of the dimension of velocity is at t raised to minus 1. So the dimension of velocity is given by it is 1. L means 1. 1 in length minus 1 in time and 0 in mass. The dimension of velocity is 1 in length minus 1 in time and 0 in mass. So this is the dimension of velocity. That is the power of Fundamental physical quantity is called a dimension. So 1 in length minus 1 in time and 0 in mass. This is the dimension of velocity. Now we have to find out the dimensional formula. Dimensional formula is a compound expression containing the relationship of the derived quantities in terms of fundamental quantities. Uh, in terms of three fundamental quantities mass, length uh, and time. That uh, dimensional formula is the fundamental quantities. So, the dimensional formula of velocity is given by it is independent of mass. So, m raised to 0 and it depends on length and time in this manner. So, this compound expression containing three fundamental quantities is called dimensional formula of velocity. Now, we have to find out dimensional equation of velocity. Dimensional equation means an equation which is equating the physical quantity with the dimensional formula. So, the physical quantity is velocity. So, Dimensional formula of velocity is equal to m raised to 0 L t raised to minus 1. This is the dimensional equation for velocity. So, the dimension of velocity is 0 in mass, 1 in length, minus 1 in time. The dimensional formula of velocity is m raised to 0 L t raised to minus 1. And the dimensional equation of velocity is v equal to m raised to 0 L t raised to minus 1. So this is, I think you should uh, understand the difference between dimension, dimensional formula and dimensional equation. Remember, if you put L raised to 1 here, L raised to 1, T raised to minus 1 is equal to L raised to L T raised to minus 1. That means if you put 1, one will take no illegal same meaning. That L T raised to minus 1 L raised to 1, T raised to minus 1 L yellow, same meaning. So don't bother about 1 in, in place of L in your textbook. So, this is the difference between di dimension, dimensional formula and dimensional equation. Now, we can discuss one, one more physical quantity. Now, the dimensional formula of acceleration. Acceleration is equal to velocity divided by time. Acceleration is equal to velocity divided by you already learned in your ninth class. So we already know the dimension of velocity that is L T raised to minus 1 divided by the dimension of time that is T. So, so L T raised to minus 1 divided by T which can be written as L 
t raised to minus 1. The t in this denominator can be taken in the numerator in the form of t raised to minus 1. So, f t raised to minus 1, t raised to minus 1. That is l t raised to minus 2. So, this is the dimension of acceleration. That is 1 in length minus 2 in time and 0 in mass. So, dimension of acceleration is 1 in length minus 2 in time and 0 in mass. Now, the dimensional formula of acceleration is m raised to 0 since the acceleration is independent of mass. m raised to 0 l t raised to minus 2. This is the dimensional formula of acceleration. Now, the dimensional equation of acceleration is the symbol for acceleration is a. a equal to m raised to 0 l t raised to minus 2. This equation is the dimensional equation of acceleration. Now I think you have understood what is the difference between dimension, dimensional formula and a dimensional equation. Now we have to learn the application of dimensional analysis in the next class. Thank you.